All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another episode of the Triple Option Podcast. Today, we're going to be pretty much talking about 2024 rookie quarterbacks, their expectations, what we could see pretty much from the guys that were drafted in the first round, um, and how many of them we're going to see throughout this season as well. Uh, what's going on, Tom? What's going on, Dom? How are we doing? Oh, what's up, guys? I, yeah, I didn't know if we we're going to talk much about Michael Pratt today. Um, Dom, so kind of like for, for the rookie quarterbacks, where do you want to start specifically at? Uh, I mean, we could start... With Caleb Williams, who was first, we can start with Bo Nix, who's maybe a surprise at twelve. Up to you, which order? Yeah, I guess you want to go. I guess we'll just go down the order of the guys uh, specifically drafted. So for Caleb Williams, we just got like we recorded our dark horse MVP candidates. I think um, for this year, we obviously have the highest expectations for him. He's the highest odds to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, he is a very low bar to clear for Chicago Bears rookie quarterbacks or let alone just overall quarterbacks in franchise history he could end this season statistically is the best quarterback in bears history in a single season he's got the weapons to do so i would say there's obviously a disappointing end to his season for sure i mean this team could just not even sniff the playoffs at times they could end up winning four to five games um but i think i think you're okay with that as long as williams looks like a franchise quarterback i think i'd rather as a Bears fan, Williams look like a legit franchise quarterback and win four games and just the defense loses you games or injuries to receiving um, the skill set guys then make the playoffs and Williams just has a very subpar rookie season and somehow the running game or the defense gets them in. Um, I don't know if you guys would agree on that specifically. Uh, I don't I don't really know how likely it is that they win four games that Williams looks like a franchise quarterback because the defense is really talented. So I don't know if the defense is going to be the problem there. It kind of seems like hey, you have uh, you have two Pro Bowl caliber receivers, and uh, we just spent the eighth overall pick on your number three. So go do something. <laughs> and they I have think, Giants legend Dante Pettis. <laughs> I think at bare minimum, Caleb Williams will be in the Bears history books after this season if he stays healthy for all seventeen games and starts fifteen of them. All he has to do to set every rookie quarterback record for the Bears is to average .65 touchdowns per game, 130 passing yards per game, and have a 65.8 completion percentage. That would come out to 12 passing touchdowns and 2,100 passing yards. That's the bare minimum. Like He should be in their record book as long as he's healthy for being the best rookie season ever. And the Bears have never had a 4,000-yard passer. Only one quarter, Only one rookie quarterback in the past three years has had 4,000 yards last season Stroud had 4,100 he only, again he only played 15 games because he was um he had that concussion for a little bit so realistically CJ Stroud was on pace for about 4,600 passing yards I think Caleb Williams is in the same realm as CJ Stroud I think he's probably a better prospect overall I think he has better known weapons I think I think kind of like you guys mentioned I think Caleb Williams should set the Bears uh, all-time single-season passing record because they've never had a 4,000-yard passer, and I think that's very doable this season for him. Yeah, and I think, too, like, in a very good position. I think, like, he's probably the most hyped-up quarterback drafted since Trevor Lawrence, I would say, that went number one overall. He's definitely had more hype to him, I think, than Bryce Young or Stroud did when they were getting drafted. And, like, you compare him to, like, Lawrence, like, how much of a poor environment that was, where, like, ETN gets hurt before the season even starts. He has Urban Myers, their head coach. They win three games. Um, like, this team is suited to, I think, at least have six to seven wins at the bare minimum, um, no pun intended, and it probably has a good chance at um, making it to the playoffs this season uh, as a rookie. So, I think, yeah, like I think for Williams, you'd expect him to be a top 17 quarterback in his rookie season, and I don't think you would be too surprised if he's a top 10 quarterback at the end of the year. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I think that's I think that's what the goal should be. I mean, see, think about it this way. C.J. Stroud as a rookie last year. He's entering this season with the, I believe it's the third best MVP odds, and like he's considered a top five quarterback pretty much by everyone. Like I think Caleb Williams could make that same climb his rookie season yeah and just having keaton allen and dj Moore to do so it's like it's crazy and um like stroud threw 23 touchdowns and five interceptions last year i would i i think there's a good chance that williams throws more than 23 touchdowns in his rookie season i think he can get close to 30 i don't know about the five interceptions i mean that was kind of a lead on stroud's part but um i, I think there's a good chance like nine and six uh this team or like in his specific record that's what Stroud went so if they went like 
I think they can get nine and eight, and nine and eight could get you into the playoffs nowadays. I mean, some other teams got better, um, like around the Bears, like Atlanta obviously got better. You'd assume, uh, mm, I wouldn't say New Orleans got better, uh, but like C- Seattle could be better. The Rams might be fine. I mean, like there's going to be some teams in that hunt area, but I feel like I feel like sh- like Williams has a pretty high floor this year for his rookie year, which is, I mean, the expectations on him are going to be crazy, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Bears win prop is eight and a half. Uh, I'm fully expecting them to at least hit eight, I think. They, they, they have a very doable schedule. Also, they have the NFC North, which is a tough division, but then they have the NFC uh, West. So Seattle's beatable. Arizona is beatable. Uh, even the Rams are beatable now, and San Francisco mm-hmm. obviously is a great team. And their three division matchups seem to be the Panthers, the Commanders, and the Patriots, I think. Yeah, I believe so. So... Who's their uh, Who's their AFC division they play? Uh, they don't. Oh, they play the uh, the Tex, uh, AFC the South, South, which is gotcha. also, which is all winnable games, I pretty much too. Games. I mean, yeah, and like it goes back to like our question, like say they do end up winning thirteen games this year, and Williams <laughs> sets all records for the Bears. They he they could he could win MVP this year, which is like the absolute peak of the season, um, and like the ceiling for him in his rookie year. So I really wouldn't be too. Sh- uh, no, I'd be shocked if that happens, but I think winning 10 games isn't like out of the equation. So so we just mentioned now that Caleb Williams could win MVP. We mentioned it last video as a dark horse. What what does he have to do at like minimum, or what should his floor be where we say we're satisfied? Like, because if you look at it, like obviously Trevor Lawrence's rookie year, he was in an awful spot, but he still threw for 3,600 yards, only 12 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. And Trevor Lawrence is like the best comp for prospect wise of caleb williams like let's say caleb throws for let's say 3500 yards let's say 20 touchdowns and let's say 15 interceptions because he's airing it out a little too much would we be satisfied with that after year one not gonna lie i may be disappointed with that i, I think, like yeah, specifically I, it. I was gonna say i feel like i might be there too which just goes to show how high his expectations are well i, mean, I know it, it may be his expectation due to like his prospect type but also like the team is really good around him like this is what third or fourth year Eberflus as the uh, Bears because we know he's not a top five head coach. But to have weapons like this to be just to just be placed into an offense with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, and DeAndre Swift isn't you know an All Pro running back, but he gets the job done. Offensive line's okay. The defense is good. Like this is this is a this is a team that could win now, like this year or next year. Like you know try and win a playoff game. Yeah. It's just the NFL is such a different beast. Like Trevor Lawrence threw 17 touchdowns, or excuse me, 17 interceptions in his three years at Clemson, and then threw 17 interceptions <laughs> his first year in the NFL. So, like, I guess there is a chance that he could throw 15 interceptions, and we shouldn't really put too much stock into that, which would be more than he threw in his three years um, in college football. So, maybe that. I, I think really just like how are the interceptions interceptions looking? Like a lot of those could be just tipped, or or obviously not his fault, but. I think I think we have high expectations for Williams, and probably the most we've had since Lawrence, and and maybe even more than Lawrence, just because of the position he's going into. With maybe a solid head coach, we'll see, but definitely more expectations I think than Urban Meyer and Lawrence's weapons, because that team that year, um, my memory not great. Did they have they did they have Christian Kirk yet? I'm just looking it up now. I don't know if you guys they got know. Kirk. No, his wide receiver one was Marvin Jones, and then he had Lavishka Chenault and Laquan Treadwell. I mean, like these options are night and day from what Warren's had. That's true. Yeah, and even even if Lewis is, is a below average head coach, it cannot be as bad as Urban Meyer. No, not not at all. And like solid like ground game. Well, I think Dondre Swift should be fine there. And like I don't know. And, and like, how much Roman better is James Robinson gonna be than than Jones? Right. Or? Right, so yeah, we obviously have high expectations for him. Um, I think somebody will have lower expectations for that. There could be way two ends of like how this season can go with Jaden Daniels on the Commanders. I mean, we had them as an F graded team, right, in our in our tier list. So like, we don't really expect them to win more than five games this season, maybe six at the absolute max. Um, I guess, Don, what do you what do you kind of think about Jaden Daniels in his rookie year specifically? I think there might be a slight learning curve. I mean. I, he's one of those, those guys that came out of nowhere this past season in college. He threw 40 touchdowns to four interceptions. He didn't even have 40 touchdowns total in the, his prior three years combined. Like, he just went absolutely insane this year. So maybe as he keeps learning, he'll progress more. I think his rookie season 
will probably be more in line with um like I'm trying to find a good con like like Zach Wilson's rookie year. He played 13 games. Well, I'm just I'm just looking at the stats. He played 13 games and he was the number 2 overall pick, just like Jaden Daniels. He threw 2300 yards, 9 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Like the touchdown to interception ratio seems to be the biggest issue with these rookie quarterbacks. You saw it last year with Bryce Young. He threw 11 and 10. Somehow Aiden O'Connell had 12 touchdowns and only 7 interceptions. Somehow he had a positive ratio. I don't know how. Uh, Will Levis had 8 and 4 in only 9 games. Like, the biggest thing is that. So, although Jaden Daniels went insane at LSU this past year, I think maybe his stats I don't think will be as crazy as his college and as we expect Caleb to be. I think, don't get me wrong, I think Washington could be, I'm one of the ones that are a little higher on them than you two, so I think maybe he plays slightly better, but I would be... If Jaden Daniels finished the year with around 3,000 passing yards, just about, I'll say, 17 touchdowns, I'll say one per game, if he can keep his interceptions down to around 12, 13, and then on the ground can rush for 505 or something like that, I would be okay with that for his rookie season. Yeah. Um, when you said, like, uh, quick tangent, um, just that he exploded into his final year, I was like, that was kind of reminds me of, like, Burrow at LSU as yeah, well. Burrow threw 60, 60 touchdowns. 60! That's insane Burrow. in 15 games. That's yeah, wild. And both transfers to LSU. So the next time LSU gets a transfer quarterback, get ready for their last season because they'll be, they'll be ready to go nuclear. Exactly. Um, but, like, I think... I'm like, I think the the commander's defense should be better. I just worry about that old line. And like Daniel's obviously a big kind of con with him or just like a weakness is he doesn't really give himself up. He could get killed out there. And I worry about the offensive line that obviously was not great for Sam Howell last year. And I think Sam Howell was honestly better than, I guess his stats will show just because every single play he was under duress. Um, and just like, I don't know. I think I, it could be a really bad year for Jaden Daniels, who's going to be 24. And you're like, all right, um, how much more room for development do we have? But it could also be a fine year. Like, he's still got a wide receiver, one caliber guy in Terry McLaurin. He's got two good running back options if Eckler isn't completely washed up. But I, I worry about the weapons. I worry about the O line. Um, maybe just Zach Ertz, buy a bunch of stock in, in him, and he'll just be the safety blanket. Um, I guess. Compared to last year's quarterback class, do you think Daniels at the end of the year will have a better year than Bryce Young? Do you think? I would hope from so. Bryce Young's, I I don't know though. Bryce Young did throw it's, for twenty eight hundred yards, but I do think Jaden Daniels' legs will give him like a little more upside, like like short term upside over Bryce Young. Because I mean that Panthers team was bad no, but no, we, no. we didn't think it was going to be that bad going into the that's, year that's i mean true. i did it i did it at least <laughs> so i don't know like that's he that's the thing you have to tamper expectations i mean like will levis played nine games he only threw for 1800 yards and eight touchdowns if he plays a full season he's not even hitting 17 touchdowns so that you do have to lower expectations a little bit for these rookie quarterbacks so i would hope Jaden daniels at least throws more touchdowns than Bryce Young did last year, which was 11 in his 16 games played. Yeah. yeah. And the no, thing, the thing with Daniels is this, like, I, I understand like, you know, he, he won the Heisman, like he, like you could do the Burrow comparison, LSU, um, like fifth year, like, you know, came out of nowhere kind of thing. But he was throwing touchdowns to Brandon Ayuk at to Arizona State. Like, are we nervous that like this guy is going to be 24 years old? in his rookie season behind uh i mean i guess you could say kingsbury's a good offensive head coach um dom would you agree yeah. oh, you a good offensive um, coordinator offensive coordinator i guess sure but uh doesn't always translate so maybe they do have yeah. to do more of a college style offense which maybe would help him maybe it doesn't it's one of those things that you're not it's just different for each situation yeah I mean, and the defense just does not really, like, I know Dan Quinn came in and, like, got a bunch of his guys, per se, but, like, Bobby Wagner, <laughs> like, Jeremy Chin, like, these guys aren't, like, you know, groundbreaking talents on defense to where it's like, okay, these guys are somewhere to be scared of. Like, this is a team that hasn't beaten the Giants in, like, three years. Like, this team's bad. But I guess yeah. totally new um, people, you know, in the driver's seat in terms of uh, coaching and quarterback, so maybe it'll be better. I kind of hope not because they are my team. Vision rival, but I I don't know, man. I'm just not too big on Jaden Daniels, Heisman or not. He's 24, and like I'm a big fan of the true college breakout, like three year guy. That's the prospect you want, and that's McCarthy, that's Williams, that's May, and he's just 
your outlaw here does not give himself up and does not um, throw the ball away, takes a lot of sacks. Like these are these are qualities that don't translate to the NFL very well. So whatever. That's you mentioned where I stand on it. You mentioned him taking a lot of hits, and I think a lot of people are comparing him to Lamar Jackson just because he likes to run a lot. I mean, and he's explosive when he does run. Um, Jaden Daniels, it says he weighed in, seen right around 200 pounds, 210 pounds. Lamar said he's down to about 205, and he was 225 last year. Are you, like, I'm concerned for Lamar. I should have brought this up in the MVP video, but I'm concerned that he dropped 20 pounds to get faster. I feel like he maybe wants to bulk up if he's getting hit more. Same thing with Jaden Daniels. If he's going to be taking a lot of hits, I feel like I'd rather have him a little more bulked up than being only 200 pounds. Well, for sure, but I think I more so meant like not giving him, not um, throwing the ball away in terms of like not like trying to keep the play alive. I mean, not being a running quarterback, more so trying to keep the play alive by scrambling. And like in the mm. NFL, like you see guys like Zach Wilson, that's his downfall. Like you see him see it, uh, the first wink of pressure, and he's just sprinting backwards. And that's the kind of things that are just if you can't fix that, you're never going to be a good NFL quarterback. That's true. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, obviously higher expectations for Caleb coming into this year. Uh, for the third quarterback um, drafted with Drake May, third overall, right now he's not listed number one on that depth chart. It is going to be Jacoby Brissett. So there is maybe an off chance that Brissett starts a few games this year, um, but you'd like to think that Drake May is going to get most of the reps or most of the games played towards the end of this season. Um, he's coming in with Ramondre Stevenson and Antonio Gibson as his running backs. Maybe the worst receiving core I mean, yeah, probably out of any of the quarterbacks we're going to talk about, it's Kendrick Bourne, it's KJ Osborne, Juju, Demario Douglas, rookie Jalen Polk, does have Hunter Henry as his tight end, has a solid O-line, not the best, but not the worst. Um, for May, probably higher expectations than Jaden Daniels, because I think we were all higher on Drake, uh, Drake May as a prospect overall. But I also think it wouldn't be the craziest thing, as like obviously I mentioned, like we got to temper expectations for rookie quarterbacks. Drake May may not have the greatest season in the world. I mean, this is not a good Patriots team. We also thought they were going to be one of the worst teams in the AFC. So I think, I, I doubt May is going to bring this team to the playoffs, kind of like Stroud, because I think we view this Pats team worse than we viewed Texas, the Texans going into last year, even though we viewed the Texans to not be a good team. I would be very shocked if May turns like Polk into Take Dell and and maybe Kendrick Bourne is like a Nico Collins this year or something random like that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a great year for the Pats, but I think all you like my four for the the ba or the Bears that I proposed that question that like they win four games, but he looks like a franchise quarterback. That's pretty much what you want to expect from May this year. Um, Tom, what do you think about May going into his rookie season? I think the expectations for May are definitely lower than Daniels one because. Not going to be a day one starter for sure yet. I think he probably will wind up playing. He might, minus the trainer puncturing Tyrod Taylor's long narrative, I think he might get like the Herbert thing where he only bench gets benched like a few games and then winds up, you know, coming in um, maybe in a blowout and, you know, plays decently well. And the weapons are, I would say, Jalen Polk, KJ Osborne, and Kendrick Bourne are significantly. Um, lower on the, you know, your skill ladder than McLaurin, Dotson, and maybe like Yami Brown, I'd probably say is by the way, or Luke McCaffrey, the guy, they, the guy they just drafted. So I would say if the Patriots win four or five games here and May looks okay, he'll cut him some slack because he's like a Josh Allen project type quarterback anyway. Like you're not expecting him to be good day one. Daniels is 24. I think May's 20 or 21. So big uh you got you know just three more years of life like in football career just like available for yeah maze you know, development and they're not really in win now mode the patriots like their defense is good for sure um christian gonzalez coming back kyle duggar drill pepper solid um safety judon should be back christian barmore so they have a lot of talent on defense so if they can just you know keep some games close that's what they did last year pretty much too so if they can win you know five games and may's not awful i think it's like okay but I think if they could somehow big up pot six or seven wins here, and then it's like, okay, all's good. You know, go for above 500 next year. Yeah. I think it's just if like, Joan Polk is good, then, like, you could maybe look at this team a little bit different. It's just, like, who do you see, like, taking the load off of May and who's going to take the pressure off of him and who's going to be, like, a safety blanket? Maybe it's going to be Hunter Henry. The O-line may be okay. Um, definitely some variance on there. But um, I think... Yeah, I think there's a good chance May finishes maybe even second in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting. Like, there's a good chance that happens. Um, Dom, what do you think about May? Yeah, I don't expect him to be on the bench for too long. If he maybe balls out in the preseason, maybe they just roll with him week one. Uh, if not, maybe it's more like the Herbert situation like Tom mentioned. And 
I can't picture him being in week six and not starting yet. Like, to me, if you take a guy third yeah. overall, I feel like you want him going. So I, I would expect him to become the starter by around week five or six, unless Jacoby Brissett's just going crazy and they decide to roll with him and keep going. But I do expect him to come in around that time. And if Drake may, I mean, these weapons, I think it's a bottom five group of weapons to have in the NFL. If he can average about 200 passing yards a game and keep a positive touchdown to interception ratio, I would consider that good for Drake May. Obviously, like the eye test is big too because if you're watching him and he just doesn't look right out there, I don't care what the stats really say at the end of the day. But if he does have those stats, I think it would assume to me that maybe he's taking the steps forward to keep improving. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, next quarterback that was drafted was the big like shocker of the draft. It was Michael Penix. He ends up going um, eighth overall to the Atlanta Falcons. We talked about Jaden Daniels being kind of older as a prospect. Well, Penix played six years of college football, uh, had some COVID years, and he is going to be, he's 24. He just recently turned 24 about two weeks ago. So they paid a lot of money for Kirk Cousins in the offseason, um, which is guaranteed a two-year deal. There's a chance Michael Penix does not play more than like one game in a season until he's like 26, 27 years old, which is just wild to think about. And I, and the only way he plays this year is if Kirk gets hurt. And obviously you probably don't want that as a Falcons fan. I highly doubt they would bench Kirk. And I don't think Kirk is that, it's not like a Derek Carr situation. Like Kirk is much better than that and is not going to play that poorly. So it's weird for like Penix. We don't have any expectations that he's going to play. And we may be seeing the same thing next year as well. Uh, I guess like, uh, Don, what are your thoughts on Penix overall as a player? Um, and like, do you kind of agree that, yeah, we're not going to see him until 2025 or six? Yeah, so I have no problem with Michael Penix, the player. I have the problem with Michael Penix on the Falcons. That's where the issue is. Um, I just don't see how he touches the field, like you mentioned, unless Kirk Cousins gets hurt, unless week 18 is irrelevant for them and they can let him play, unless um, if there's a blowout, he comes in in the fourth quarter for a mop of duty, whether the Falcons are winning or losing. Like those are the only ways I really see him playing because Kirk Cousins is the guy. I've heard some people, I don't, I don't fully remember which show I was watching, but they're like, what if Kirk Cousins struggles this year? Will they try to Michael Penix? You don't give Kirk Cousins forty million dollars guaranteed per year, and then if he struggles a little bit, you're gonna pull him right away. Like I just don't see that happening. Um, if you look back at a few of the rookie quarterback classes. Like in 2021, Jake Fromm played, I think, one or two games for the Giants. He had 210 yards. Ian Book played one game for the Saints, had 135 yards. Obviously, Penix was a first-round quarterback. But if Penix has more than 250 passing yards this year, I'll be surprised because I think that would imply he played more than one game. Like I think that's mm-hmm. that's what I'm expecting him to do this season. And I, I guess they're basically trying to replicate like Favre and Aaron Rodgers, basically. Like, but just uh, at, a, at was, a much different. Uh, yeah, no, I know, and price. like because Favre was getting older, and like was obviously on that team for a while. Rodgers sat three years on the bench, and his first year was his age twenty-five season. If Penix sits three years on the bench, he'll be twenty-seven, which is crazy. But then again, it will be the prime of his playing. And nowadays, it's not crazy to see a quarterback go into their late thirties. And I get wanting to invest into life after Kirk Cousins, and you would assume if Kirk Cousins is going to make you good, you're never going to be picking this high again. So I, I see the appeal. I just don't know. Like I think I would have done that for McCarthy because you let McCarthy sit for three years or whatever, and he's 24 rather than a 27-year-old. But it was definitely unorthodox. I kind of like the idea of it. It's just, I think, a different way of thinking. But obviously the Falcons team was far from perfect, and they had other needs as well. So it's kind of unfair to Penix. Tom, what would you think about the whole situation? I think Dom said it well. Like the problem is Penix and the Falcons. It's not Penix the player. I think he's talented. I think in I would say after two seasons he might get some reps. I mean Kirk's is well, Kirk's guaranteed a lot of money in that contract. So yes. I think it's going to wind up being a three year probably at least Kirk Cousins tenure on the Falcons. We'll see how he looks. I don't know in the start of the twenty twenty six season, but it's. I mean, they're setting up setting him up well. If you would assume London gets an extension, you would assume that Bijan probably gets a second contract. That they spent the eighth overall pick on him, and Kyle Pitts, who I'm not fully out on yet, but probably should be, um, also on that team as well. I think the Falcons. I mean, they're in pretty decently win now mode now. I mean, you got Kirk, you got your weapons. Like, go for it and do where it goes. But it's it's just it was just weird just seeing them draft panics. But I think they could have traded back and gotten them like at at eighth overall is kind of weird but whatever 
So, four years ago, when the Packers shocked the world and took Jordan Love, which no one really expected. Fast forward four years, Tom, you said Aaron Rodgers could be a dark horse MVP candidate this year for the Jets, while saying Jordan Love has no chance of winning MVP this year for the team that drafted him. If we fast forward four years from now, will Kirk Cousins be a dark horse MVP candidate on another team, and will Michael Penix have the fifth best odds to win MVP for the Falcons four years from now? I don't think so. Um, I think, but I, I think it's more likely that the Cousins part is false than the uh, than the the Penix part because you know Penix could surprise people for sure and like wind up playing like you know a breakout guy his second year. But I just don't know about forty year old Kirk. Uh, I don't think Kirk. You know, thirty six year old Kirk was not thirty six year old Rogers. So that's kind of where I stand on it. Yeah, um, it's gonna be interesting to see when Penix plays next because like. I guess it really worked out for the Packers and Jordan Love because he spent a lot of years on the bench um, or a few, and it worked out because they were able to see him play well before the fifth-year option was like fully needed, and, and he played very well, and he's going to be their franchise quarterback. So you'd like to think that maybe it's going to be the same thing for Penix down the line, who spent – still it's just crazy – six years in college um, as well. So the next quarterback uh, that was drafted was J.J. McCarthy. Uh, he is one of the more younger quarterbacks in this class. He's still just 21 years old. He was the 10th overall pick by the Vikings, trading up to get him um, in the post-Kirk Cousins era. Uh, he's someone that's going to have, I think, a lot of up and, ups and downs in his rookie season, but I think kind of like Caleb Williams is probably, out of all the guys we've talked about uh, outside of Penix because he's not going to play, is in the second best situation here. Like he's got Aaron Jones as his running back. He's got Justin Jefferson, arguably the best receiver in the league, and Jordan Addison as his two receivers. He has an elite tight end in TJ Hawkinson. The O-line could be the downfall of them this year specifically, and obviously the defense isn't great. But if McCarthy ends up playing 10 plus games this year, he's going to be in a good position to succeed. That's just a question how much uh, time they keep him on the bench, if any at all. Um, Dom, what do you think about McCarthy this season? Yeah, you mentioned it. I think McCarthy probably is in the second best situation, and I think that will probably lead to him having the second best statistical season of the rookie quarterbacks. Um, I mean, if he... Same thing with May. I can't picture J.J. McCarthy being on the bench until mid-October with Sam Darnold as the starter. Like, I think he might... I think he'll might play more than May, maybe this year. Um, if McCarthy, with this group of weapons, you have to assume bare minimum... Jefferson's getting a thousand yards. You'd like to assume Addison is at least close to a thousand yard player, and Hawkinson has been pretty consistently a thousand yard tight end. So like I think JJ McCarthy should have three thousand passing yards this year, and I don't think that's too crazy to say because three thousand passing yards is really only about two hundred fifty a game if he misses some time. Like I don't think that's too much of an ask. Um maybe his touchdowns are a little low, but even in college, he didn't throw that many touchdowns or that many interceptions but yardage wise he was relatively safe with the ball good with completion so i would expect him maybe to have the second most yards right behind caleb um and i think i don't think that's too far off on a limb to predict yeah and it's wild too because jj mccarthy may have more passing yards this season than Penix will have over the next three which is just like kind of wild when you think about it because i guess you're assuming if cousins makes it to that third year i would then if Penix, you gave me that, doesn't get hurt. if you gave me that bet with even odds, I would take McCarthy this year to have more passing yards than Penix the next three. Penix, I would, or, I would take McCarthy. It's, yeah, it's wild. Uh, Tom, what do you think about McCarthy in Minnesota and just them drafting him tenth overall? Um, I think the expectation is probably a around five hundred record. I think, like Dom said, I don't see him. I don't see him on the bench past October first with Sam Donald's the quarterback. I think Kevin O'Connell knows how to run an offense. It's very evident. He's a great offensive head coach. Um, and I think that he knows what he must do. And it's not start Sam Darnold. And I think I wouldn't even be surprised if McCarthy winds up coming out there week one. Like, I'd be more surprised if McCarthy was the starter, was still on the bench in like week five or week six, than I would be if he was week one starter. I think he definitely could be. They drafted him 10th overall for a reason. They traded up for him. Um, and he has great weapons and. I think we'll see who gets the first team reps come August. Yeah. Um, and then finally, the last quarterback is Bo Nix of the Denver Broncos. Um, they still kind of, I feel like, shocked a lot of people when they ended up taking him in the first round as high as they did at 12th overall. He is 24 years old um, already. He ended up spending a lot of time in college, both at Auburn and at Oregon. Um, not as many as Michael Penix, one year less, but did spend five years in college. Did throw 45 touchdowns and three interceptions last year for the Ducks. He's going into probably... Maybe 
uh, probably the second worst skill position. Um, skill position, I guess, help. I mean, it's kind of its own tier with New England and Washington. I would say Washington's probably slightly better, but he's got Javante Williams, good running back, Samaj Pirine, fine. Um, Joe McLaughlin honestly showed some flashes last year. But Cortland Sutton, I think, is as okay as you can get as like a high-end wide receiver too. Don't think he's really a wide receiver one. They got Josh Reynolds, Marvin Mims, uh, Troy Franklin, his teammate at um, Oregon as well as Adam Troutman um, as their starting tight end. The O-line, I think actually could be fine next year. Uh, they lost uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, but they still have Bulls and Powers um, and McGlinchey, who they signed last offseason. I don't really have any idea what to expect for Knicks this year. If they even flirt with the playoffs, I think that's a success of a season. But Bo Knicks could be not great this year and it could be not his fault and they could have even lower expectations next year when he's 25 years old so this can go real south real quick but sean payton can make us all look dumb and he could be a top two quarterback from this draft class and i think we'd all be shocked if he's even in the top three uh tom what do you think about nicks overall next year um i don't think he's gonna be uh, too great i mean he was the quarterback when chris davis did the kick six right like he's no. been around that no, long. He's not, he's not that. Old. No. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my God. Yeah. Imagine. <laughs> no. Um. But what, he did four years, three years at Auburn, two at three, Oregon. Three I think and, yeah. again, back to Jaden Daniels thing. He's 24. I do understand that he had um a lot of you know passing yards, and he was in, in that high powered you know Oregon passing offense. But a lot of it was yards after catch, and I just don't know if. The Denver Broncos of this season have the ability to play like a West Coast college offense. And I'll go out and say, I am not raising my expectations about Bo Nix anymore because Sean Payton's the head coach. I think Sean Payton is the most overrated head coach we've ever, we've ever watched in our entire life. Sure, he draws up a great playbook, but when you have Drew Brees and you have Michael Thomas and you have uh, Jimmy Graham, like over, over all those years, Drew Brees being like, I think like Sean Payton expecting Bo Nix to like kind of emulate that would be, I think, just inaccurate. And I don't think he is, though, because they are kind of different builds and play styles and the whole thing. But their win total is five and a half this year. If they win five, I'll be like, fine. But I don't think anybody really has expectations for Bo Nix this year. Like, he's competing with Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham, who, if he gets benched for one of those, then I think it may be time to pack it up, like, just right now. Marvin Mims is a slot wide receiver. I don't see how... He's just good. I mean, he had some good games last year, and then, like, Peyton just wouldn't give him reps. Like, I saw, like, his snap percentage on the sleeper app. I, I was a fantasy manager him last year, and I saw he was he got a couple good games, and then just nothing. He would get he would play five snaps. So I don't get how, you know, Sean Payne's just going to, like, start utilizing him and, you know, unlock him. Like, Tim Patrick, Troy Franklin, uh, Josh Reynolds, and Corlton Sutton. Like, this is just mid, 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 and I guess Corlton Sutton's pretty good, so... I don't, I don't yeah. have very high expectations for this at all. But they do have uh, Matt Parrott, Giants legend, as their backup left tackle. <laughs> nice. There, uh, there you go. What about you, Dom? I mean, the biggest problem with Bo Nix is that he's going to remind everybody too much of Zach Wilson. Like, just looking at him with Zach Wilson on the team with him, like, that connection is just going to be there, I think, all season, which might hurt Bo Nix, um, his, like, perception. But from an expectation standpoint, I would expect Bo Nix to play the second most games out of all the quarterbacks. Because I do think, like Tom mentioned, it's Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham. If if they love 24-year-old Bo Nix that much, they're going to play him this year. So I would expect him to be the starter right away. So I think he probably will play the second most games if he stays healthy. And then from an actual like playing standpoint, I mean, he, he led college football last year with a 77.4 completion percentage. And Russell Wilson last year for the Broncos had his best season uh in three years at and he had 66.4 so i'm expecting and wilson did a lot of like dump offs and stuff like that last year so i'm expecting bo Nix maybe to have still a relatively high completion percentage maybe average 200 yards a game but i think the touchdowns and the interceptions just might not be what we want from a starting quarterback like i think that might really be where he's hurting um maybe sean payton Apparently, Sean Payton knew about Patrick Mahomes before everybody else. Maybe he knows about Bo Nix before everybody else. Time will tell, but I, I'm not expecting too much given his weapons being Cortland Sutton and not much after that. Yeah. yeah. But, quick it's question, it. though. I do want to say, so over under week three, week three and a half, that we see either or both of 
the Spider-Man meme of Zach Wilson and Bo Nix, under, and the under, Scooby-Doo under. unmasking villain under. Uh, meme of Bo Nix and Zach Wilson. Under? What, what, what are we talking about? It might be preseason. What are we talking about? <laughs> I think it, it, it might be halftime of week one if Bo Nix has a bad first half. Uh, I'm trying to pull up the Broncos' schedule really quick. So they start at Seattle, then they play Pittsburgh, and then at Tampa. So when they play Pittsburgh, TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, they are just going to probably tear that offense apart, and I can see the meme coming fully fully out by week two. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, I feel like, an up-and-down year for, for Bo Nix. It's not going to probably be too pretty. One last quarterback for you, Matt. So in 2023, the Packers drafted Sean Clifford, I believe in the fifth or sixth round. He threw 37 passing yards his rookie year. The Packers this year drafted Michael Pratt also in the later rounds. Will he have over or under 37 passing yards this upcoming season? Uh, I'm going to go with the under. I'm going to go with the under. You don't think he plays at all? Sean Clifford, one for one, 37 yards. It only takes Uh, one. uh, Clifford is the two. Who do you think has more passing yards this year, Pratt and Clifford combined or Michael Penix? Oh. Got you, Penix. And you're just betting on injuries at yeah, that point. Yeah, it's, or, I, I, or I would have to go. I'd have to go Penix in that situation. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, all right, yeah. So that's gonna wrap up our kind of talk about the rookie quarterbacks from this for, uh, past first round of the 2024 NFL Draft and how they're gonna look maybe in their rookie season. Hope you guys did enjoy. Let us know what you guys think of these rookie quarterbacks in the comments on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, appreciate a rating and review over there as well. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.